हेलो एंड वेलकम टू कंप्यूटरलॉजी एकेडमी और टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द संथाल घना टेनेंसी एक्ट दैट इज चैप्टर एट एंड नाइन एंड दिस इज द लास्ट पार्ट ऑफ द एसपीटी एक्ट और द संथाल परगना टेनेंसी एक्ट एंड ड्यू टू द अनोइंग थिंग ऑफ द संथाल परगना टेनेंसी एक्ट मेनी ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स हुआ अपियरिंग इन द जे पी एस सी सिविल सर्विसेज एग्जाम कमिट वेरियस मिस्टेक्स विच रिस्ट्रिक्ट दम फ्रॉम क्लियरिंग द प्रलिम्स so those who have not watched the other videos that are related to spt act as well as those who want to go through the subject matter in a better way that is chapter by chapter section by section sub section by sub section can go on to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon and get notified whenever we upload such videos as well as if you want to watch the earlier videos then you can go on to watch the playlist the complete playlist is a separate playlist that is spt act land related laws so if you subscribe the channel then you will find those videos under the playlist right so here let us start after this short information and here the first topic of today is chapter 8 and that is limitations on various issues so here section 64 to 66 describes the limitations what kind of limitations on appeal what kind of limitations on various other aspects of this spt act are there so here section 64 says that all the applications except those under section 42 for which no period of limitation is provided elsewhere in this act shall be made within one year from the date of accruing of the cause of action so suppose some of the person is not getting that of the land under the bandobasti that is <clears throat> vacant holding is not being allocated or being settled with someone and he is a grieved person and if there is no time limit that is given within which the person can go on to file an application to the dc then in such case he can go on to file the application within one year of occurrence of such event so here it clearly says that all those actions all those events in which a person is aggrieved and he thinks that he should go on to file a complaint for that matter can go on to file the complaint within one year if no specific time limitation is given in that particular section that particular chapter or for that particular kind of action is delineated in this, this act that within the period of 180 days or within the period of 6 month or within the period of 90 days you can go on to file an application if you are aggrieved for such kind of actions so if such kind of thing is not delineated then you have to go to file the complaint file the application within one year right next is section 65 here it says that an application for eviction of the rayat on the ground mentioned in section 14 shall be made within Two years from the date of misuse of the complaint of. So suppose that any of the person have breached the terms of agreement or those rights which are delineated within the record of rights or those method of using the land that are not according to the traditional law and the custom of that particular region. Then in such cases. the person or the landlord or the mool rayat or the village headman whoever is the aggrieved person against the rayat who is thinking that such kind of action of the rayat may deteriorate the quality of the cultivable land it may jeopardize the value of the land then in such cases the landlord or the mool rayat or the village headman whatever the case may be can go on to file an application for the eviction of rayat from his holding within a period of 2 years within a period of 2 years from the date of such kind of misuse so here the limitation is given in a clear way right next is section 66 here it says that limitations for appeal so if a person wants to go against the verdict of any of the case like uh, some of the case was heard upon by the sdo and he thinks that the verdict was not in his favor or it was not correct and he should go on to file an appeal to the higher authorities like the dc or the adc additional deputy collector whatever the case may be so in such cases he can go on to file the appeal so it is given here that every appeal under this act shall be 
presented to the tribunal appointed under section 57 so under section 57 the state government is empowered to appoint a tribunal land related issues tribunal within the state to which the complainant or the aggrieved person can file a appeal against the order of commissioner right so there are total of uh, six commissioners so in that case uh, the five commissioner is so in that case if the commissioner gives any verdict which is not welcomed by the aggrieved person the aggrieved person thinks that he should go to the higher authority then the last and the final authority or the higher authority is the tribunal the state tribunal for the land related issues and that is established by the state government under section 57 so he can go on to file an application against the order of the commissioner within 90 days so here the time limit that is given is within 90 days of the verdict that was given by the commissioner the aggrieved person should go on to file the application to the tribunal right next is to the deputy commissioner or to the subdivisional officer within 60 days of the order appealed against so in case he have to go on to file an appeal to the deputy commissioner or the subdivisional officer against the order of their subordinate officer. Then in these cases, he have to file the application, file the appeal within 60 days. So here again, the time limit is already given for such kind of appeals in which the legal thing that is the judicial or adjudication work is going on against any issue or dispute right now here a short information about you all that we have already compiled and made the kit for the upsc civil services preparation as well as jpst state pcs preparation so both the material both the kit study material is available in english as well as in hindi medium also and here you can go on to order the material study material directly from our app or website or you can go on to contact directly to us from the contact details that is provided in the description box below and if you want to buy these books one by one then you can go on to buy these books from the bookshops also right so this is for the upsc and this is for the jpsc right so here now come to the next chapter of the SPT Act and this is the last chapter which is chapter 9 and here it is for the miscellaneous provision so all those provisions which the framers of this act thought that are important and should be addressed which we are not delineated in the foregoing eight chapters are discussed over here and here the first section is section 67 which relates to the penalties the type of penalties or the type of fine that can be imposed on any riot, landlord or the whatever the case may be who is going to be penalized. So if any person being a landlord, so here the landlord, the person who is entitled to collect the land revenue itself is going to be penalized, right? So if he fails to repair and maintain any of the particular dam, ahars, dikes, drains, tanks, and any other water reservoir or channels then he will be penalized so here it clearly says that the irrigation facility should be maintained by the government or the landlord here the landlord nowadays it is the ceo itself so he is the person who should maintain the irrigation facilities because the irrigation facilities ensure the better harvest and in the harvest is good then only the farmers then only the riots will be in position to pay their land rent in a timely manner. And that is why it is mentioned over here that the irrigation facilities, the water resources, the sources of water should be maintained by the landlord. And if he fails to do so, then he will be penalized. Being a landlord or an agent of landlord, a village headman, a mool riot, fails to perform any of the duties imposed by this act or any law or any custom so whatever the duties whatever the work or the whatever the that of kind of improvement works land improvement and the other things which are delineated under this act if the village headman mool rayat or the landlord or the agent of the landlord who is appointed by the landlord as his official 
if these people fail to fulfill such kind of duties then again they will be penalized and that is not limited to this act only but even any other law which delineates their duty that such kind of things would be done by the landlord or the village headman or the mulraya as well as any customary duties that is those are according to the tribal customs and tribal laws of that region that is the santhal pargana region if such kind of duties are imposed customarily on them that such kind of things should be done by the village headman then they have to fulfill that their duty right next is being a landlord village headman or a mool rayat if he fails to repair with the assistance of the rayats any dam or dikes and other water reservoirs etc so in case of maintenance as well as in case of repair they have to do these things that is with the help of the rayat so here it is not so that he have to invest his own funds it is a collective duty that is the landlord village headman or mool rayat whatever is the case may be he have to repair the water bodies with the help of the rayats assistance of the rayats so it is the duty of the rayats also not only the duty of the landlord or the village headman or the mool rayat so it is a collective responsibility right next being a landlord or the agent of the landlord a village headman or mool rayat fails to report to the competent authority any transfer of village land made in contravention of section 20 so here the section 20 of the spt clearly delineates that what should be the method of transfer of the land in what ways the land can be transferred to some other person to whom it can be transfer and to what community he should belong and to what community a particular community can transfer his land so if such kind of any of the sub part sub section of section 20 is breached and if in contravention of such action such act such action occurs that the transfer of land has occurred and it comes to the notice of the landlord village headman or mool rayat and he if it is not intimates or informs the deputy collector about such kind of breach of this act then in that case again he will be penalized right next being a landlord if he fails to report to the dc the death of the village headman so as we have already learnt in the previous videos that if there is the death of the village headman then the new village headman should be appointed by the dc within 3 months of the occurrence of the death of the village headman the existing village headman and for that matter the information about the death of the village headman should be provided to the dc by the landlord himself so if such kind of thing does not occur that is the landlord does not inform the dc about the death of the village headman then again he will be penalized right being a landlord or the agent of the landlord he settles any of the village waste land or vacant holding or any other holding or the land with a non jama bandi rayat so here it clearly says that as we had already seen in the section that we are related to the settlement of the vacant land also that the village headman can settle the waste land or the vacant land to the jama bandi rayats only and in that also various principles had to be followed like that is equitable distribution of the land proximity to the land contiguity to the land landless laborer should be given the preference so such kind of things should be followed but if the landlord does the favoritism or he is a corrupt person then if he goes on to settle the waste land or the vacant land to any of the non jama bandi rayat that is that rayat who is not having any kind of holding in that particular village as well as he is not the registered resident resident means what he is living in that village his dwelling is in that village but he does not hold any of the cultivable land he is basically a landless laborer so if such kind of any of the wasteland is settled to such rayat who is not a jama bandi rayat of that particular village 
then in such case again he will be settled because this will come under the corrupt practices right next being a landlord or the agent of a landlord if he fails to supply a newly appointed village headman either with original or with certified copies of the jama bandi or the record of rights so here it clearly says that the record of rights that is khatiyan jo hindi mein hum log kehte hain it should be provided to the newly appointed village headman if there was no village headman due to death or whatever it is and if the dc appoints a new village headman then in such cases what will happen the village headman have to provide him with the record of rights whether it is original or whether it is a certified copy even if you will go to the kosagar in your uh, court district court then you will find that uh, there are uh, record of rights khatiyan hote wahan par and if you ask for the khatiyan then you will get a certified copy they will stamp it the xerox and they will sign it and they will approve it that this is the copy of the authentic one right so such kind of copies should be about the record of rights or the jama bandi rayat should be provided to the newly appointed village headman by the landlord or his agent and if he fails to do so then again he will be penalized right next is being a rayat now till now it was the responsibilities that we have discussed about the landlord and if he fails to fulfill such kind of responsibilities then he will be penalized but here now these are the responsibilities of the rayat and if the rayats does not fulfill such kind of responsibilities then they can also be penalized right so here the first thing is if he fails to assist the landlord or the village headman or the mool rayat in the repair of any of the village dam or or whatever it is basically the water resources so here the responsibility lies with the village headman that he should coordinate and he should supervise the repair and the construction or whatever it is maintenance of the water resources but he should be helped the, by the rayats of that particular village and if the rayats fail to assist him then again the rayats will now be penalized right next if he encroaches on any of the recorded village park camping or the grazing grounds so if generally in the villages these kind of things occur that uh, if there is a plot that is nearby to the village path grazing land or whatever it is that is of the community used land then they do what every year they will encroach the contiguous region of the village path or the grazing land inch by inch fit by fit just they will increase their land by one or two feet or one or two inch like they start encroaching it and such thing goes on continuously and here it clearly says that if such kind of action is come to coming to the notice of the landlord then he will have to complain to the dc and again the dc will take the appropriate action the dc will impose the fine on that particular person who is encroaching on the land of the community use that is set aside for the village use cut the use of the village population common use right that is camping ground grazing ground or the recorded path avagaman ke liye bhi to kuch chahiye theek hai next cutting down any of the village tree illegally so even nowadays if you will cut any tree illegally then you will be penalized that is the common thing right or indulges in the misuse of the village forest like misuse that is the villagers are allowed to collect the firewood or the minor forest produce from the village forest but they should not go on to cut down the logs the wood logs and go on to sell in the market so that is coming under the misuse of the village forest then he shall be liable to a fine that may extend up to 200 rupees in such cases all these cases the fine will be up to 200 rupees and in case of continuing offence to a future fine not exceeding 5 rupees for each day during which the offence had continued so for any of such offence the fixed fine that is 200 rupees and thereafter there is a variable rate of fine that is plus 5 rupees per day for which this offence has continued so this is the thing in which the 
होल पनिशमेंट द होल मेथड ऑफ फाइन विल गो ऑन राइट नाउ इफ एनी लैंड इज ट्रांसफर्ड इन कॉन्ट्रवेंशन ऑफ द प्रोविजन ऑफ सेक्शन ट्वेंटी बाई फ्रॉड्यूलेंट मेथड एंड इज कल्टिवेटेड बाई एनी पर्सन देन इन सच केसेज वॉट कोर्स ऑफ एक्शन विल बी देयर देन इन सच केस ही सेल बी पनिश्ड विथ इम्प्रिजनमेंट फॉर अ टर्म विच मे एक्सटेंड टू थ्री ईयर्स इन सच केसेस द पनिशमेंट विल बी फॉर थ्री ईयर्स इम्प्रिजनमेंट ऑफ थ्री ईयर्स एंड अलॉन्ग विद दैट इट देयर मे बी द फाइन विच मे एक्सटेंड वन थाउजेंड रुपीज और विथ बोथ एंड इन द केस ऑफ कंटिन्यूइंग ऑफेंस टू अ फ्यूचर द फाइन मे नॉट इंक्रीज एक्सीड दैट ऑफ फिफ्टी रुपीज पर डे सो देर आर थ्री थिंग्स दैट इज थ्री ईयर्स ऑफ इम्प्रिजनमेंट देर आफ्टर वन थाउजेंड रुपीज ऑफ फाइन और बोथ देर आफ्टर इफ इट इज कंटिन्यूड ऑफेंस देन फिफ्टी रुपीज पर डे फॉर विच द लैंड हैड बीन कल्टिवेटेड सो दिस इज द होल थिंग इन विच अ पर्सन हु हैव एक्वायर्ड एनी लैंड through a fraudulent method that land comes under the section 20 and the section 20 of the spt act had been breached suppose that any of the tribal land was transferred to a non tribal and the non tribal was using that land and if it comes to the notice of the dc whether by means of a complaint or by his own motion if he comes to know that such kind of transfer had occurred then in such case what will happen the person who is a non tribal and who is cultivating the land he may be imprisoned for a period of 3 years he may be fined with a fine of 1000 rupees and for a continued period for which he had cultivated the land 50 rupees per day fine may be imposed or both may be there even the imprisonment plus the fine both of them can be imposed on him now section 3 subsection 3 says that such a fine shall be imposed by the deputy commissioner only after such inquiry as the deputy commissioner may hold either on his own motion or on the information received upon the complaint of the aggrieved party made within 3 months so again there is a limitation that in occurrence of such kind of action the complaint should be filed to the dc within Three months, not more than that. The time should lapse there. Okay, from the date on which the offence was commenced, right? So here the DC can take the action by his own. There may be the person who can file the application, but the person who is aggrieved, he should file the application within three months of the occurrence of such action, right? Next, an appeal shall be lie shall lie to the commissioner against any order of the DC. in posing a fine under subsection 2 and the order passed by the commissioner on such appeal shall be final so here after commissioner there will be no chance of appeal if you think that you were under the imposition of fine on you due to the breach of any of the spt act sections then you think that the fine was not uh, that of conducive or that of uh, according to the law they are heavy they are undue and if you think that i was not wrong and this fine is not appropriate that was imposed on you then in such case you can go on to file an appeal to the commissioner and if the up commissioner upholds that verdict of the dc or even if he remitted the fine then in both the cases no further appeal can be done can lie to any other higher authority you can not go to the state tribunal in such cases where the fines are being the matter of issue right next is section 60 here it says that every notice required to be served on a landlord shall if served on an agent empowered by the written authority under the hand and seal of the landlord receives the same complaint same notice same thing समन वगैरह जो जाता है देन इट विल बी कंसिडर्ड एज द नोटिस दैट हैज बीन सर्व डायरेक्टली टू द लैंड लॉर्ड सो इन मोस्ट केसेज वॉट एपेंस नन ऑफ द लैंड लॉर्ड गो ऑन टू टेक टेबल एंड चेयर एंड सिट इन द फ्रंट ऑफ हिस्स गेट इन हाउस और इन हिज ऑफिस एंड गो ऑन टू कलेक्ट द लैंड रेवेन्यू बाई हिमसेल्फ सो बेसिकली डे दे डू वॉट दे अपॉइंट देयर ऑफिसियल्स इन डिफरेंट विलेजेस बिकॉज इन द ओल्डर डेज 
there were landlords who were having uh, the village under their control which were various in numbers large number villages like four villages five villages ten villages so such kind of landlords or the jamindars were there so they used to appoint their agents for the collection of the rent from each village and if a notice has to be served in any particular village for any particular matter by the dc and if he dispatched the notice then if that notice is delivered to that official that has been appointed by the landlord then it will be considered that the notice has been served directly to the landlord and not his official and the landlord cannot deny that i have not received the notice so this is the case now section 69 here section 69 says that bar to the acquisition of the rights over certain lands so there are restrictions on which the certain lands cannot be given to some person or nobody can claim the right over some of the particular categories of land so here notwithstanding anything contained in any law or anything having the force of law in the santhal pargana no rights shall accrue to any person in the land held or acquired as per the provisions of section 20 so if any of the land acquisition has been done or acquired under section 20 then on such land no person can claim the right for the rights that this land is mine or i am the owner of this land land acquired under the land acquisition act of 1894 even nowadays the government does the land acquisition under this same act right although the compensation and the other things have been changed from time to time the method of compensation the method of relocation of the pe people who are affected due to this land acquisition but still the land acquisition process is going on according to this act right for the government or any local authority so like the government wants to lay the railway lines or want to construct new expressways new uh, grain go downs or whatever it is industry is like that then the government does the land acquisition or for the local authority like the construction of community hall like the construction of that uh, new block building new community building new panchayat building so for such things what happens the government does the land acquisition right so if such kind of land had been acquired by the government for such purpose then such land remains the property of the government or that local authority or that of railway company so nobody can claim the ownership rights or any kind of right over such kind of land which is the government land which had been acquired by the government for particular purpose and that building that particular infrastructure is already in existence even it is no has not been constructed then also the government land cannot be uh, claimed by anybody like uh, you will find various categories of land are there in jharkhand garmajarua am garmajarua khas bakast land raiti land kaisare hind land so such kind of different categories of land are there jirat land so such kind of lands are there so here if somebody goes on to claim the land that is garmajarua am or garmajarua khas then on such land the government have the ownership right and nobody can claim that land that this is my land right if you even want to construct some kind of building or some kind of infrastructure then the government have to the right to demolish it even to koi bhi tej ban ke agar majrua land pe koi claim na kare hai na theek hai the land recorded or demarcated as belonging to the government or to the local authority which is used for any public work so suppose some of the land has been acquired by the government and for public purpose the government had settled it as a grazing land for canal for reservoir water bodies or like they have constructed some kind of community hall for the common purposes camping grounds so such kind of land again cannot be claimed by any particular person a vacant holding retained by a village headman mool rayat or the member of their family or the landlord right so if there is a holding that is vacant and the village headman mool rayat or the members and the family of the 
village headman thinks that this land should be retained with us and we will think about this vacant land where to settle it or whether to use it by your own then such kind of land can again not be can can be like uh, claimed by any of the person or the rayat if such kind of vacant land is being withhold by any of the landlord or village headman or the mul rayat village headman's official holding grazing land and the burial grounds so village headman's official holding yani ki village headman's personal property official holding this can again not be claimed by any of the particular rayat next is grazing land as i had said that the grazing land is for the community purpose for the common use so nobody can claim that again burial ground ab samshan ghat ho aise bhi kisi ko nahi chahiye ya jo kabristan hai wo aise bhi kisi ko nahi chahiye nobody is going to claim that kind of land but some of the land mafias even nowadays they are doing that they are claiming that land also right section 70 that is recovery of the due so method and the ways in which the dues can be recovered so here all the costs interests damages and compensation awarded under this act shall be recoverable in the manner provided for the recovery of the money due under the decree so suppose that if any of the village headman files a complaint to the dc that this person is not paying the land rent due to him and this land rent should be recovered from him and for that matter he files a complaint to the dc and thereafter after due inquiry and after hearing both the parties the dc approves a method approves a way in which the land revenue should be recovered from that particular rayat then the same method should be followed that has been already delineated in the decree बहुत सारे लोग आजकल क्या होता है पहले से ही कहते अरे डिक्री नहीं कहते डिक्री हिंदी में मतलब होता है कि जो आदेश पास हुआ जो न्यायालय से ठीक है बट लोग क्या कहते हैं डिग्री कहते हैं ठीक है चलिए कोई बात नहीं जो सपाट सेक्शन सेवेंटी वन दैट इज पावर टू मेक रूल्स सो अंडर दिस एक्ट इफ समिंग हैज बिन लिफ्ट आउट देन हु हैज द पावर टू मेक द रूल्स रिलेटेड टू दिस एक्ट so the state government may make the rules by notification the state government will make the rules and thereafter they will notify it in the state gazette right without the prejudice to the generality of the foregoing power the state government may make rules with respect to the following matters so if the state government is going to make the rules related to this act that has not been discussed in a better way in this act then also the state government should not prejudice the foregoing things right so here it is mandatory that the state government should not try to dilute this act by any of the rules and regulations that is being notified by the state government right so the, those new rules and regulations should not be prejudiced to this act right here the manner of ascertaining the consent of the resident jama bandi rayat under section 5 so in what manner the consent of the jama bandi rayat should be taken this can be laws on or the rules and regulations on this matter can be made by the state government right the manner in which a village headman shall discharge his duties so on this again how does the village headman should fulfill his duties the rules and regulations on these things can be made by the state government manner for which the application is to be made for the transfer of a raiti land under subsection 1 of section 21 so in what way the transfer the registration and the other proceedings for the transfer of the jama bandi rayat should go on on this matter also the state government can make the rules and regulations processing fee to be paid to the registering authority so the stamp duty jaise aap log jate hain registrar ke office mein zameen likhwane ke liye hai na so that is the way in which you get the ownership rights of the land so the processing fee for that matter so that the ownership rights of that land will be transferred from one rayat to the another rayat the rules and regulations related to this matter will again be made by the state government right next is 
द प्रोविजन फॉर एक्वायरिंग द लैंड अंडर सेक्शन फिफ्टी थ्री एंड द प्रोसेस ऑफ हैंडिंग ओवर द ऑक्यूपेंसी ऑफ सच रैयत सो लाइक द लैंड आर बींग एक्वायर्ड फॉर द गवर्नमेंट पर्पजेज फॉर वेरियस एक्टिविटीज कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ लैंड रेलवेज एंड रोडवेज एक्सेट्रा वेरियस थिंग्स सो हियर अगेन द प्रोविजन अंडर विच द लैंड शुड बी एक्वायर्ड राइट so the ways the method the purposes for which it can be acquired such things can be notified by the state government and the way in which the process of handing over the occupancy right of that particular raiti land which is being acquired to the government or to the authority or the company which is going to erect the industry which is going to construct the road whatever it is that will be done so all these things will be notified by the state government right next is section 72 and this is the last section here we finish off the spt act right here it says that applicability of the special provision so nothing in this act shall impact any other law in force in the santhal pargana unless the same has been revoked explicitly or through necessary implications so if some of the act some of the rules and regulations laws are in existence before the implementation before the enactment of this act spt act then those act laws rules regulations will remain as it is if they have not been revoked explicitly those acts are mentioned in the spt act that now onwards after the enactment of the spt act these laws rules and regulations cease to be existent till then they will remain as it is this spt act will not impact those laws rules and regulations in any way explicitly or even through implication those acts will not be considered as revoked if the implementation of the spt act is hindered due to existence of those act in such cases again due to implication necessary implication they may be revoked they may cease to exist or they may become subordinate to the spt act if those rules regulations and laws hinders the implementation of the spt act itself right so this last sub section says that so thank you very much for watching the videos and if you are finding these videos useful then please consider subscribing the channel and press the bell icon to get notified whenever we come live or whenever we upload new videos so that you will get notified about these things you can also follow us on our facebook and instagram handle this is our telegram channel very soon this is going to be the one of the major source for the, your studies as well as you can also download our app the description for the app is provided in the this uh, link for the app is provided in the description box below you can download it from the google play store directly and all those resources like the current affairs magazines free test series and the other things whatever are available on the app those are also available on our website so you can go on to surf it from there also and get the benefits of these resources for your civil services preparation so here if we finish off and please mention in the comment section below now onwards on what section you want the videos related to your preparation whether for the civil services or whether for the jharkhand public service commission exam so here we finish off thank you very much and have a nice day